welcome to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson, an apostle of the Lord who teaches in the authority of Jesus Christ through the leading of the Holy Spirit, imparting wisdom and knowledge for good success through kingdom living. Brought to you in part by Covenant Faith Praise and Worship Center, 9900 Brockington Road in Sherwood, Arkansas. And now, Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson. God bless you today. I'm Dr. Brenda Jefferson, and welcome to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living. People of God, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for saving me. You know, the word of the Lord says that it is in Christ that we live, we move, and we have our being. Not only that, we have been made complete in him. People of God, I declare and decree that you're the head and not the tail, that you're above and not beneath, that you're the lender and not the borrower, that you're blessed going out and you're blessed coming in. As a matter of fact, your blessings are looking for you, getting ready to overtake you. People of God, as we continue in this powerful passage of study regarding the tabernacle, and we talked regarding the priest, glory to God, us being priest, glory to God, to God, we talked about how God so orchestrated things that he allowed us to be three in one. We're not just spirit, soul, and body, glory to God, but we are also priests. We're sacrificed, and we're the temple of the living God. But there's another passage of scripture that I want to read in your hearing, and that comes from Revelations, the first chapter and the sixth verse. The word of the Lord says, and hath made us kings and priests unto God his Father, to him glory and dominion forever and ever. Did you hear that, people of God? The word of the Lord says that God hath made us kings and and priests. Now what I want you to understand is that a priest is one who intercedes on another's behalf, glory to God. And a king is one who's in authority. What the king says is law, glory to God. So God is saying, I am elevating you from just being a priest and I'm allowing you to be priest and king. And nothing tells the story, glory to God, like 1 Samuel, the eighth chapter, and we're gonna begin reading at the first verse because the word of the Lord says that the children of Israel, after all God had done for them, after he had brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, they say, now we want a king. We want somebody over us because God, you're not enough. We want somebody to lead us into war. We want somebody to lead us into battle and we know that we would win. People of God, let me pause right here. Let me ask you a question. Has God done so much for us that we have forgotten the things that he has done? I know it's easy to look at the children of Israel, how they complained in the wilderness and say things like, you would think that they would be thankful. Are we thankful? Has God not done enough for us? If he doesn't do anything else, the fact that he sent his son to die on my behalf, glory to God, so that I could be in right standing with God is truly enough. But he didn't stop there. He gave us power and dominion. He, uh, the, what was lost in the garden of Eden was restored in the garden of Gethsemane. So now we're not just priests where we intercede on another's behalf, glory to God. But he said, I made you kings. I have given you authority. And so when we look at 1 Samuel, the eighth chapter, glory to God, and when we look at that first verse, I want you to hear this. The word of the Lord says, and it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. 
Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel in Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all nations. But this thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. People of God, we read in this passage of Scripture, where the people of God that have seen the wonders God performed. They saw him allow a east wind to blow all night long, and they walked over on dry land. They saw him when he was hungry, rain down manna from heaven. They saw him that when they were thirsty, glory to God, that he allowed Moses to speak to a rock, and water came forth out of the rock. They saw the Lord protect them on every hand, gave to them, blessed them. The Bible said even in their wandering in the wilderness, their shoes didn't wear out there. Their feet didn't swell, glory to God, neither did their clothes. But now they get to a place and they say, we want a king. Samuel, your boys are not qualified to lead or to judge us. We want a king. Now God is saying to Samuel, after Samuel prayed to God, and he said, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. The word of the Lord says that God sends Samuel and he anoints Saul as a king. Now what I want you to understand is that God is so awesome in the things that he says to us. He is saying to the children of Israel, first he told them, he said, listen, you do not really want a king over you. Let me tell you what they're going to do to your children. Let me tell you what they're going to do to your grandchildren. You do not want a king over you. The children of Israel, we want a king. We want somebody to lead us into battle so that we can win. Are we not winning with God? Are you not better off today than you were yesterday? Can you remember from whence you came? Glory to God. You spent 400 years in slavery. Glory to God. You didn't know whether or not God was going to move for you. But one night God allowed an angel to come through. Glory to God. Tell them to apply blood on the doorpost. Everywhere my angels see the blood, he'll pass over. Is that not good enough for us? When God opened doors, when he makes ways for us, are we like the children of Israel? Do we have an insatiable appetite, something that cannot be satisfied? The word of the Lord, ah, thank you, God. The word of the Lord says that God sends Samuel to anoint Saul as king over them. And you know the story of Saul. He reigned, but the word of God says that Samuel told him, I'm going away and I'll be back. What happened? Remember now, we've been made kings and priests, and God is going to foreshadow what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. The word of the Lord says that Saul is king, and the people began to pressure him into doing something that he was not authorized to do. Now, in the Old Testament, I want you to understand that the roles were specifically designed by God that a priest was a priest and a king was a king. But here we are with Saul, anointed king by God, is getting ready to step out of his kingly role, glory to God, and offer up sacrifices. And what happened? The Bible says that the kingdom was taken from him. But on the other hand, the word of God says that after Saul had reigned, glory to God. God called Samuel again. He said, I need you to go on an assignment for me. And I believe that God is saying this today because what I want to say to you today that there are many Saul still on the throne, but David is about to be anointed king. Your time has come, glory to God, for that place in God that God has called and ordained for you. The word of the Lord says, God says, come here, Samuel. I want you to go down to Jesse's house, and I want you to anoint me 
a king. The thing that we need to understand, people of God, is that the people wanted a king and Saul was given to them. But God is saying, now anoint me a king, one that I will raise up, one that I have watched, glory to God. I've listened to him sing melodies to me in the night, glory to God. I've watched him take care of the sheep. I know his heart. As a matter of fact, he has a heart after me. He is in constant pursuit of me. He's not looking for some high position, glory to God. He just wants to spend time with me. Can you identify with that, glory to God, that you're one that just want to spend time in the presence of the Lord? It's not about a title, glory to God. It's not about what you want to do. God, I just want to spend time with you. I want to sing songs that will bless you, God. I want to let you know, God, how much I love you. So here David is, a shepherd boy, out in the field. God sends Samuel on an assignment. He said, go to Jesse's house and anoint me a king. Now, I want you to fill the horn with oil. And the oil will flow when the right king walks under it. And you know the story, glory to God. He gets down to Jesse's house, glory to God. And Jesse calls all of his finest sons in, glory to God. And they walk past Samuel and the oil would not flow. There's a song that people sing all the time. And it is, what God has for me is for me. People do not fret yourself. As a matter of fact, the word of God says in Psalms 37 and 1, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thy envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. People of God, I want to let you know today that God has something special for you to do. And when he sends someone to speak that word into your life, I want to let you know that you will be ready to walk in what God has called you to do. So here Samuel is. He's at Jesse's house. And Jesse brings his finest out glory to God Saul let look at uh, Samuel look at them which one is it that my God has anointed king but because the oil would not flow see may I submit this to you this is what I love about God there are indicators that will let you know the one that God has his hand upon now if the oil had begun to flow with the first one Samuel would have missed it but God said, because the oil will not flow until the one that I have designated go under the horn, don't anoint them king. So he marched them all around. And Samuel, in such contact with God, knew that after he had paraded all of his sons and the oil didn't flow, he understood that God did not send him on an empty assignment. That when God sent him to Jesse's house, he knew that Jesse had a son that he had already chosen to be king. The word of God says that Samuel asked the question, is there not another one? And uh, Jesse says, yes, there is. He's one out in the field. He's a ruddy little something. Let me tell you something. Where was he? Out in the field, tending the sheep, glory to God, blessing the Lord. What God was watching his heart. He had a shepherd's heart, glory to God. So he said, bring him in. Immediately when David was called in and the horn was lifted, the oil began to flow, glory to God. People of God, I want to let you know today that God has something good in store for you. And what God has for you is for you. You don't have to worry about anybody else walking in that that God has ordained for you. So the word of God says that the oil began to flow and David was anointed king. Now this is what I want you to understand. Saul is still on the throne, but God has anointed David king. Why? Because Saul steps out of his kingly role into the role of a priest and began to offer up sacrifices when Samuel told him to wait until he returned. But the people began to press upon Saul and saying, listen, don't wait any longer. Go ahead. We need this. We need that. How many of you are stepping out of the will of God because of the pressure of people? Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries International invites you to partner with us to empower all of God's people for kingdom living. Your investment will help ensure that this powerful word 
blesses hearts and changes lives throughout the nation and around the globe. For your investment of any amount, we'll send you the Apostle's powerful message, Finishing Well, on CD to say thank you for your support. Send your best gift today to Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries International, P.O. Box 6778, Sherwood, Arkansas, 72124, or visit our website at www.apostlebj.com. So the word of the Lord says, David is now anointed king. And this is what I like about David. David did not get the big head. He did not begin to talk about, I've been anointed king. I can't take care of the sheep anymore. Isn't it amazing sometimes that when God blesses us in order to uh, complete or fulfill an assignment or call us to the assignment, that we forget about our first love. The Bible says that David went back to the field and began to work until the appointed time. But the parallel that I want to draw today is, is that Saul was the people's king. David was God's king. The word says in 1 Samuel, the uh, 30th chapter, that David and his men in the 29th chapter, it talks about how David was aligned with the Philistines, how he was against, listen to this, he was aligned with the enemy. But the enemy said, is that not David? We cannot allow him to go to battle with us because if he goes to battle with us, glory to God, and see his people, he will turn on us and begin to produce friendly fire. So they send David home. David gets back to Ziglag and he discovers that Ziglag has been burned. The Bible said they took the women. They took the children, glory to God, and they took all of their possession. David is in great distress, glory to God. The Bible says that the men that went with him, when they got back to Ziglag, their children, their wives, all of their possessions were gone, and they talked about stoning David. But the Bible says that David encouraged himself. Not only that, watch the shift now, because I want to let you know who we are and what God has called us to do. Remember, Saul could not act as a priest and a king, but here David is, and he asked Abathar, he, the priest, he said, bring me the ephod. Now, if you study the uh, priestly garments, glory to God, the ephod was a garment of intercession. David is saying, bring me the garment of intercession. I am getting ready to inquire of the Lord and Ask the Lord, what shall I do? The Bible says he puts on the garment of intercession. He is still a king, but he can also operate as a priest. So the word of the Lord says, oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. The word of the Lord says that David inquired of the Lord. And he says, shall I pursue? People of God, there are some battles that we have not been called to fight, that we might be in the midst of. But when we inquire of the Lord, the Lord will tell us whether or not this is our battle. The word of the Lord says that David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue? And I need to know, I, I don't just need to go to battle. I need to know also, am I going to win? God says, pursue, for you shall recover all. Here David is stepping out of the kingly role to get into a role of intercession. Why? Because the men that were with him, they have suffered great loss also. But now God is saying to him, you have interceded on their behalf. I have given you the blueprint for winning. Now put back on your kingly garment, go into the battle and win. The Bible declares, glory to God, that David was a king. He operated as a priest and a king. And God is saying to us today that we cannot, we can just, we can intercede for people, but we can also walk in authority. People of God, did you not know that because of what Jesus Christ did, that we can declare and decree a thing and it shall be established? Did you not know that the word of God says in Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask, think, or imagine according to the power, the word, the faith that worketh on the inside of me? 
Have you not read in Isaiah 54 and 17 that the word of God says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? Have we not read in Isaiah 55 and 11 that the word of God says, I watch my word to perform it. It will not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I sent it out to do. People of God, I want to let you know that the kingly anointing is coming up on the body of Christ, the people of God, as never before. As a matter of fact, I feel the anointing of God and God is getting ready to catapult us into some areas of victory. Now, my understanding of a catapult is as if I am in the... Uh, in the uh, supply room, glory to God, and I'm waiting for the orders as to what those in the battlefield needs, glory to God. I don't have to go through the enemy even though the enemy is right there. I can catapult their materials over the enemy into our camp. People of God, that's what God is getting ready to do for the people of God because we are walking in our kingly anointing, because we understand that the king's word is power, glory to God, that when we speak it, glory to God, God God honors it. Why? Because we are the temple of the Holy Ghost and uh, the Lord lives on the inside of us, which means that when I speak and I speak the very oracles of God, it is just as if God is speaking. We have been given and we are his power of attorney. People of God, Saul lost the kingdom because he operated as a priest. But here David is operating as a priest and a king. What was God saying? I'm going to give you a foreshadow of what I've called my people to do. So in the book of Revelations 1 and 6, we read, and he has made us kings and priests. People of God, there is an anointing that is being released, that's being unlocked right now in the people of God. Miracles, signs, and wonders are on the horizon. God is saying, I'm taking you from faith, glory to God, not only from faith to faith, but I'm taking you to a level of trust. Now, David had to trust God to go into the enemy's camp and take back everything that was stolen. Now, the beauty of that passage of Scripture is, is that they did not destroy anything. They didn't destroy the wives, they didn't destroy the children, nor did they destroy the possession. And I want to let you know that there are some things that's been on lockdown that belong to you. But I want to let you know that it's only in a holding pattern and God is about to release. People of God, today like never before, I want you to embrace the kingly and priestly anointing. Do not stop at just interceding, but it's time to go to another dimension. It is time for us to walk in our kingly authority. We saw that with Jesus Christ. He is the king of the Jews. The Bible says that when he got up, Matthew the 28th chapter, he got up with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Well, guess what? The word of God says that we are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. What does that tell us? That we have power, all power in heaven and earth. If it's Jesus and I'm a joint heir with that, people of God, I'm telling you, no longer will we be denied. We're going to declare and decree a thing and watch it be established. How do I know that throughout the scripture, glory to God, we can read where kings made decrees. Remember when Daniel was locked up in the lion's den? Remember when the king made a decree because the people talked to him and they said, listen, you don't uh, want Daniel over us in essence. And then he put Daniel over them and then they said, look, let's have a party. Let's say that everybody that prays to any God other than you, within 30 days, they'll be put into the den of lion. I like Daniel. Daniel was bold, glory to God. Daniel said, show me where the window is. I'm not fearful. I know in whom I serve, and I know in whom I believe, and I know in whom I trust. The Bible says that Daniel goes to the window, glory to God, and he allows them to see him praying, who? To the almighty God, glory to God. We've got to understand, people of God, that there is no other God like our God, glory to God. He is omnipotent, he is omniscient, and he is omnipotent, glory to God. He is El Shaddai, he is more than enough. He is the many-breasted one. He is El Elyon, he is the most high God. People of God, people of God, 
the word of the Lord says that here Daniel is understanding not just the names of God. And he didn't just understand the word of God, but he understood the God of the word, glory to God. And he said, listen, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. So the word of the Lord says that the men went back and told the king, said, listen, that man that you put over us in essence, he is standing in his window three times a day praying to his God. Well, the man liked Daniel. And the word of the Lord says that he thought that maybe I won't do this to Daniel. But they reminded the king that once the king makes a decree, it's law. And in essence, they told him that you can't change the decree. And so what did he have to do? He had to allow the men to put Daniel in the den of lions. But remember, for three, uh, three times a day, Daniel called on his God. The word of God says that he uh, was placed in the den of lions, but something supernatural happened. The Lord sent an angel down. The word of God says it in the book of Daniel, that God sent an angel down and locked the jaws of the lion, that Daniel began to rest in a place that was designed for his death, God said, I'm going to call you to a rest. People of God, I want to let you know, when a king makes a decree, good or bad, he has to honor it. But God can supersede any decree that any earthly king would make. That's why we have to hook our will into the will of God, so that we would not do anything that would displease God. Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries International invites you to partner with us to empower all of God's people for kingdom living. Your investment will help ensure that this powerful word blesses hearts and changes lives throughout the nation and around the globe. For your investment of any amount, we'll send you the Apostle's powerful message, Finishing Well, on CD to say thank you for your support. Send your best gift today to Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries International, P.O. Box 6778, Sherwood, Arkansas, 72124, or visit our website at www.apostlebj.com. Thank you for watching Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson. Pastor of Covenant Faith Praise and Worship Center in Sherwood, Arkansas. You're invited to join us for our Sunday celebration each Sunday morning at 1015 and our Tuesday night Bible study starts at 7 p.m. each week. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer.